From speakers that fill arenas to tiny earphones, most of us take the science of sound reproduction for granted. In fact, the technology behind the speaker hasn't changed much in the last 100 years, until now. In 1925, two American inventors, Edward Kellogg and Chester Rice, invented a speaker all but identical to the technology we use today. So, what's inside a speaker? Well, not much more than a magnet, a metal coil and a membrane that vibrates to create sound. At the University of Warwick, Dr. Duncan Bilson is demonstrating just how basic the tech can be. And this is simply a coil that I wrap around my fingers, sellotaped to a sheet of plastic, which you take a magnet, apply the magnet to, and you get sound out of it. So that's a speaker? That's a speaker. With the coil attached by tiny wires to an amp, and with apologies to the Beach Boys, it's time for some good vibrations. There it is. That's crazy. Grossly distorted that if you apply magnetic field, you get sound out of it. Speakers reproduce the vibrations in the air that a microphone picks up when a sound is originally recorded. But what is complex sound like music made up of? We need a way of seeing something we usually only hear. This is called the Chalabni plate, and this is a device that we use to demonstrate what happens when we resonate an object at a specific single frequency. By adding sand, you can see how different frequencies make the plate resonate in different ways. That's a frequency right there. Yep, that's one frequency. But sound is made up of a whole range of frequencies, and the human ear can pick up between 50 hertz and about 20 kilohertz. So if the basic technology behind speakers hasn't changed much in the last 100 years or so, then what's next? Warwick Acoustics is developing a brand new type of speaker. In comparison to a traditional speaker, which works on magnetic force, ours works on electrical force. A membrane a quarter the width of a human hair is sandwiched between two metal plates. When an audio signal is sent to those plates, it causes the membrane to vibrate, producing sound. Because we're moving something that's very lightweight, it moves much faster than a traditional speaker. So you get a much wider range of frequencies and the sound sounds very much more detailed. Not only that, but without the need for the traditional cone, these speakers are very thin and can be formed into any shape you like. Three speakers, an O, an N and an E. You've got a great demonstration there of the fact that you can install the speaker into any installation that you want. Absolutely. The clarity you get from electrostatic speakers comes at a price. At £5,000 for a pair of headphones, at the moment, they're only for the most committed audiophiles. Electrostatic speakers use a very wide range of frequencies to provide a very high quality sound, but there's a different kind of speaker that uses a very narrow range of frequencies to perform a very clever trick. Much like shining a flashlight in the dark, an ultrasonic speaker directs sound to a much more specific point. They're used in museums and galleries to describe an exhibit without impacting on the experience of people nearby looking at something else. Meet professional dancers Emma and Josh, Below me is the cafe at the University of Warwick. I'm going to use this ultrasonic speaker to play music for our dancers. But because the speaker's so directional, no one else in the room will be able to hear it. While traditional speaker technology might not have changed much in a hundred years, advances in the science of sound reproduction are slowly but surely changing the way we experience the world around us.